Hello and welcome to tutorial 8 on performing thermal and electrothermal analysis using PI Pro in the HST tutorial series. I would highly recommend you to see tutorials 5, 6 and 7 before continuing with this um, present tutorial video. Uh, in this case, uh, we will first go through some of the thermal fundamentals. And if you look at the slide shown here, this represents a very simple model of a thermal heat transfer problem where we have heat source at some temperature T and heat source is denoted by QS and we have a heat transfer medium and then heat is flowing to the ambient represented by T naught and the thermal equation can be given from T minus T naught equal to R into QS. So some of the common knowledge about heat sources, I mean what are heat sources? Well, there are some definitions as applied to other, you know, branches of science. For us, uh, the heat repre is represented by resistor components that would convert electrical energy into heat. Metals, uh, which have some resistance, will convert electrical energy into heat, which is also called a joule loss. And logic devices will produce heat by the switching action. Some common knowledge about heat transfer. Well, for heat transfer to happen, you need a temperature difference and then only heat will flow. When you have temperature difference, heat will flow. Heat will flow from highest to lowest temperature. That means from the body which is hot to the ambient temperature. Heat flows through both metals and dielectrics. Heat flow can be modeled pretty similar to electric current flow in a resistance network and heat will follow the path of lowest thermal resistance. Uh, this picture shows some of the common uh, materials and their thermal conductivity and as we can notice uh, the pure metals will have the best thermal conductivity hence um, you know help us in cooling down um, the temperature or the device's temperature whereas foams and fibers are the worst performing as they impede the heat. So whenever you think of thermal problems th you know two questions to ask yourself where are the heat sources and how does the heat flows to the ambient? In PI Pro, we do have thermal analysis which computes the temperature distribution across the PCB based on heat dissipation by PCB circuitry, the thermal models, thermal material properties, PCB and surrounding network. So this slide shows uh, some of the common terms or thermal resistance model for a component. Uh, starting from uh, theta GAT, which is thermal resistance between die junction and top of the package, uh, theta JB, which is from die junction to the bottom of the package, which is connecting to substrate, theta pin, uh, which is thermal resistance between bottom of the package, that is substrate and the pin pad on the PCB, theta sink, uh, theta pad, theta in Q which is denoting the thermal source. All the description is shown in the picture on this slide. Now let's l understand a little bit about PI Pro DC electrothermal analysis. Um, in DC electrothermal analysis, um, it's quite important because this could be uh, the difference between pass and fail criteria as shown on this slide because of the higher temperature resulting in higher joule loss um, from the conductor materials. In PI Pro DC electrothermal analysis, we perform a thermal aware IR drop, which computes the voltage, IR drop, current, uh, power loss density, temperature distribution in a PCB, taking into account the joule loss in the metallization and heat generation by the components. The heat is transferred away from sources to the surrounding ambient uh, by conduction through materials, convection with surrounding air and direct radiation. It leads to a temperature rise in the component PCB, which in turn leads increased electrical resistance. So this is the flow chart of the action which happens behind the scene when we run electrothermal simulation. First, electrical analysis is performed, uh, output of which is fed to thermal analysis as a heat source. After performing thermal analysis, the temperature information is fed back to electrical analysis. This loop is continued till steady state situation is obtained. Now let us go through to video tutorial demo to see how to set up uh, these two type of thermal simulations using PI Pro. So here uh, for to demo these features, we will use the earlier uh, design which we have used in tutorial five or six. 
um, we can right click on analysis and create a new thermal analysis or electrothermal analysis. So we will first go through a thermal only analysis. We add a thermal analysis and let's name it to thermal underscore only. Now once we expand uh, the thermal analysis we can see the things which we will need and in this simulation we only need to set up the components uh, which has some thermal properties or the heat dissipation properties. So let's search for this demo board. It's a TI reference OMAP processor board. So we will use OMAP, um, you know, 4440 or U10 IC, drag and drop, and we will add it into our analysis. The second IC is an audio IC, which we will again drag and drop into the thermal components. Now notice when we drag and drop the components into our analysis, it has a package. And inside a package, if we expand, we have the relevant IC, which is nothing but the heat dissipating uh, source for us. Uh, we can define the properties of the package as well as the, the die, uh, as we will see now. By double clicking on the package, we can enter the specification of the package, the thermal resistance, um, top resistance, bottom resistance, and pin resistance, we just discussed. We can also include heat sink or thermal pad as may be necessary. Uh, PI Pro always reads the footprint available in the, in the CAD file and doesn't leave you with a blank space. They always fill in uh, some of the initial calculated number. If we need more sophisticated calculations, we can switch the extract thermal resistance model and we can define the type of package, the material, uh, which is used in the package and the mechanical dimensions along with the mold material, etc. Uh, based on the inputs provided, once we click apply, it will calculate the various thermal resistances and which we can use for our simulation. Uh, in this case, we have the right uh, numbers um, based on the, on the footprint of the component. Uh, similarly, we will go ahead and uncheck thermal pad uh, from the audio IC as well, like we did for earlier, um, you know, OMAP processor. So now we have the bare, you know, packages with dies uh, sitting. We can double click on the die, uh, which is in this case U10, and we can recommend a heat source, that is the power consumption of the IC. So for our OMAP processor, we have 5 watt um, as per the data sheet, and audio IC consumes 1.5 watt. So here we are providing the manual inputs uh, to perform the thermal uh, simulation based on the power consumption of these two ICs. And that's the only requirement uh, to be set to run a thermal simulation. By double clicking on options, we can define the background temperature, that means the ambient uh, condition. We can define the heat transfer mechanism, whether it is natural convection or uh, airflow or having a specific heat transfer coefficient. In present case, we will use natural convection uh, for both uh, top side and bottom side. Once done, we can double click on the run and the simulation will take few seconds to finish. It's actually a quite a quick simulation, but again, the time depends on the PC processing power you have and the number of cores you have. So here, as we can see, our simulation is complete. And now we can go to results and we will have two results available for us to plot. Uh, we can go ahead and plot the temperature view on our PCB, uh, which we will do first and later we will look at the overview, which is more like a table-based results approach. Now looking at the temperature plot, we can see our board has a minimum temperature of around 49 degrees Celsius and the highest temperature is close to 104 degrees Celsius. Uh, we can also use the reader tool to move our mouse cursor over various PCB sections and we can uh, read the temperature right um, at that particular section. Now, as we expect, we have the highest temperature just below the 5 watt uh, power consuming IC, uh, which is quite logical. We can also rotate it in uh, 3D view and expand it in Z direction, and we can see the heat distribution across the various layers of our PCB. We can also switch off uh, particular layers and then inspect the temperature profile on the on the desired layer as we uh, we want. So we'll go ahead and unload these results and double click on overview. 
uh, to see the tabular base results. So here we can see the temperature um, or the thermal components and their performance, how much heat is getting transferred from um, you know IC to board, uh, heat to case, and then the bottom case temperature, die temperature, case top temperature, etc. We can also see the temperature performance in various layers of our stack up. And note the electrical quantities are set to zero because we have not performed electrical simulation. Under VRs, uh, like we checked earlier in DCIR drop, um, we can check the thermal performance of the VR. And we can only plot the VRs which are violating the temperature condition. Oops, not the current condition. So we'll uncheck the current condition and click on only show the violating VRs for temperature. So current limit which we have set is 100 degrees and you can see we have many, many VRs which are violating this um, you know 100 degrees centigrade condition. We can select multiple VRs um, if we want to see where exactly they are located on our PCB. Um, so by putting this window aside, we can see a few things are highlighted in our layout. And once we zoom in, uh, we can see all the VRs which are violating our you know, maximum temperature um, you know, limit. We can also um, check this temperature results uh, in relation to the radius because uh, broader VRs or VRs with more diameter can sustain more temperature. However, that is left to user to decide. So once we have performed uh, the thermal analysis uh, without the heat sink or without thermal pad, now we can go ahead and switch on heat sink on our five watt device. If you are not sure about the thermal resistance of the heat sink, we can go to the calculator. We can define the material which is used to do heat sink design and the type of heat sink which we have, whether it's a parallel plate fin or a cylindrical um, you know, pin fin and also define the mechanical properties or dimensions. Based on these inputs, uh, we, you know, the tool will calculate the thermal resistance. And once we click apply, uh, the thermal resistance is defined uh, for the heat sink for our simulation purpose. Now let us run a new simulation um, with heat sink. Now just to you know, recall the temperature which we had earlier, the max temperature was around 104 degrees uh, Celsius. Now once the simulation finishes, we can go ahead and double click on the temperature plot and notice the maximum temperature now what we have on our board is around 72 degrees. So it's almost 32 degrees drop. So this was all about performing only thermal simulation which helps us to get a first cut idea about the temperature distribution on our board and which areas to avoid in case we are thinking about routing the high speed signal traces. Now for electrothermal, we already have a couple of electrical networks set up. We can copy one of the setups um, as we described in our videos to electrothermal simulations. In this case, we are using DCIR setup. So once we do that, we can also uh, select uh, that we want to use VRM sinks and the components from the existing setup to our electrothermal setup. Now, once we have the new electrothermal uh, setup, we will first rename it so that we can, you know, clearly distinguish the different type of analysis which we have done. Once we expand, we can see it has a couple of, um, you know, components. The first component is the electrical setup, which is exactly the same from where we have copied um, this design or this setup. So we have the same VRM, uh, those five number of sinks and the nets which we have already included. The thermal properties of these components are pretty much defined the same way uh, like I have just demoed you in a thermal only simulation. If any changes is needed, we can always double click and define the new package, um, you know, uh, components. Now, if you look for electrical dissipation um, or the heat source, now it will read the information from the electrical simulation which we will perform. Uh, we don't need to manually specify the power consumption. Under options, we can pretty much specify the same things as we did in earlier section while performing the thermal only simulation. Now our job is to double click and run. Uh, it takes few seconds um, to minute depending upon how complex is your network and it finishes simulation. While going through the simulation status window, if you notice, firstly, the electrical analysis is performed Based on electrical analysis, um, the thermal 
analysis is performed. And after thermal analysis, the temperature information is written back for a new electrical analysis. And if it is converged solution, we stop there and we treat it as our final result. If not, this loop will continue till we achieve a steady state. Now, in this case, it's okay. So we can go ahead and double click on a temperature plot and look at the temperature profile of our board. Now, with the current setup, what we have, our board has temperature ranging from around 68 degrees to 145 degrees Celsius. Now, this could be really high depending upon what is the application or whether we have the heat sink or not. By clicking on overview, we can look at the power graph and in this case, all the blocks are green. That means due to temperature, um, you know, nothing is failing in our system. But in case due to joule loss, something is failing, it would be marked by a red um, block color. Now let's compare this performance with our original DCIR, um, you know, analysis, which we did, uh, which didn't account for the temperature, um, you know, conditions. Now, if you notice in the original DCIR, we had voltage drop of around 25 millivolt, 29.5. And you can see there's a marginal increase in the voltage loss in our power planes. However, this is not high enough um, to miss our tolerance. So in this case, everything is passing even with the temperature. If we compare the VR performance from the last result to this result, uh, now you can see we have temperature information as well as current information for each and every VR. For current, we only had one violation in the previous simulation. Again, we have the same one violation here. But now we also have a lot of temperature violations and we can inspect the, the VRs which are failing for temperature or current or maybe both um, specifications or the limits as we set. Now, in case of multiple um, layers, we can also go ahead and compare the layer performance. As you notice in previous simulation, all layers were at 25 degrees centigrade. But in electrothermal simulation, we have the temperature results for each of the layer. So this is a great value which electrothermal simulator brings to every power integrity designer. So this concludes tutorial 8 on performing thermal and electrothermal analysis using PI Pro. Thanks for watching this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more such tutorial video. Thanks a lot for your time.